Hello, beloveds. This is Chakra Wanda, your host of Spiritual Life Garden. And I want to come on. Thank you for those that actually tuned in um, live to WDRB.media um, through my website, ChakraWanda.weebly.com. You tuned in uh, to listen to the pre recorded live at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, earlier today so I did also an after show but what I'm doing I'm still working with my tools but I do have the files for the full show uh, it's in somewhat of three parts uh, eventually I will get a file that has the whole show together but I did want to go ahead with my production and get this out and record it and here is the pre-recorded replay of the first very first show is uh, season one episode one and this is the introduction of Chakra Wanda a host of spiritual life guarded radio show um, and uh, how the spiritual life garden was birthed as well as how the show will help uh, viewers in the future. Uh, this show comes on at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Sunday. Uh, you can listen live by going to the link in my bio here, <clears throat> which is chakrawanda.weebly.com. Uh, and then the replay is posted uh, thereafter. Um, I am posting uh, the radio show on all of my platforms. When it's played live, you can listen to it on iHeartRadio as well as TuneIn Radio, which are free apps you can download on your mobile devices. Uh, thereafter, you're going to see it on uh, YouTube uh, as well as here on Periscope. And I'll be recording the audio or having the audio file go to my podcast on anchor.fm. And it's all spiritual lifeguard. <clears throat> so here we go. go. Thank you for bearing with me as we go through the growing pains. But I wanted to get this content out to you. And thank you, for Replay Viewers, for supporting me in this. Thank you for tuning in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. You're listening to Spiritual Life Garden, and I'm your host, Chakra Wanda. I am so excited to be here with you all today, having the opportunity to be able to share with you the beauty of spiritual life garden. I want to get to know you a little more. And in order to do that, I think you need to know about me a little more. Chakra Wanda. <laughs> Who is Chakra Wanda? Well, I am an international angelic spiritual encourager. I'm an ordained angelic minister. And how did I get to this place right in this moment well I would have to say it, it was all divine timing it was all synchro destiny okay what the heck is she talking about let me just say this I am a spiritual being just like you having a human experience I am in this experience fully awake and aware confident in who I am I am here to remind you of the same thing. I'm a little black girl that grew up in the streets of the DMV. I was raised on the awareness of connection with Creator and exposure to two religions, Baptist, Catholic. How did that happen? My mom is, was Catholic and my father exposed me to the Baptist. Uh, experience when it comes to religion. 
what was beautiful is I never saw any uh, anxiousness between them about one or the other. But I do remember when I was a little girl, I did a lot of daydreaming. And I'm going to come back to that because it was significant. I remember being baptized in the traditional Baptist church. And I also remember walking down the aisle in the Catholic church, standing in the pews and really not understanding what the heck was going on. I thought I was being married. <laughs> I had to wear that white Christian outfit and, you know, and all that. But I had a rich uh, and loving upbringing in that way. And then coming into my teens, didn't get into any spirituality or following any one of those paths. Did my own thing until I started having children, you know. And then moved back into that comfort zone as I saw it. Raised my kids in that Baptist experience. But there was something that was whispering within me. And that was, what is this really, what's really, really going on? <laughs> what's really going on? And one day I was in the bookstore and I saw a book. It was titled, As a Man Thinketh. That little book was not too thick, but you know, as I began to read it, it talked about it talked about thought, it talked about mind, it talked about what we think about, you bring about in your life experience. I really couldn't get my head around any of it, but I kept that book for about 10 years in my purse. Then one day, uh, I transitioned from the DMV area, I jumped the corporate ship, I felt a calling to come into a different arena, I came into the holistic arena, healing. I, I quit <laughs> almost 24 years of corporate America and came into massage and healing work. I had experienced seeing the Pentagon when 9-11 happened. I experienced two weeks before that uh, layoffs, major layoffs at the job. I experienced major life changes in that way that made me begin to think, what the heck am I doing here, you know? Next thing you know, I'm answering, I'm listening to this this call about doing work that, that involved adding value to other people. So I said, what does that mean? I know that people would come to me and ask me for their opinion about certain things. And I noticed that I had a desire to actually reach out and I wanted to actually touch people, you know, to make them, to help them to feel better. So a coworker and myself began to ask these questions about what would you rather do you know, instead of this nine to five workaholic environment, what really calls on you? And we each began to do what I call now, we became vision partners, dream partners. We sat and we listened to each other's dreams and visions. And there were three, three careers that came up. One was massage therapy, and then there was two others. We decided to meet once a week. And we decided to talk about what was really calling on our heart to do. And then we began to research those fields. And I began to research the field of massage therapy. Began to write it down. To began to feel and be in the vision and research and connect with others who were actually working in that. Little did I know I was using innately tools that have to do with visioning and manifesting and intention work. Then I would envision that I would drive. It took me 90 minutes one way, maybe an hour one way each time I would get on the highway back in the DMV. I would envision that I'm going to a place where people are excited to see me. And that when they left, they felt better. 
Years later, I relocated out of the DMV area, coming here to the Charlotte area. As I was unpacking, I unpacked that folder that had all those notes and all those ideas. And the next thing you know, I'm looking for a massage school, and it happened to be right around the corner from where I work. Next thing you know, I'm looking at my 401k. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I can make this happen. I'm listening to teleconferences with co-workers talking about how stressed they were. I'm trying to get up out of here. Next thing you know, that was it. I said, I'm done. There was no formal plan. But I realized later the plan was really laid out for me. I quit. I jumped the corporate ship. I didn't look back. Was I scared? Oh, yes. Oops. <laughs> yep. I didn't look back. I had two children to raise. I cashed in the 401k. Was that a smart thing to do? I'm still here. That was in 2003. This is 2019. Up until six years ago, I had a successful career as a holistic healer. I learned many things about myself. I experienced the satisfaction of providing healing work. I learned many modalities because that was just the avenue. What you have to know is that where you are right now, sometimes that's just the door to a bigger thing. Along the way, yes, if I stay with the nine to five versus out there doing my own thing in my private practice and working for massage centers, still the same level of stress, you know, you had the gas crisis, on, still the same level of stress if, if I wanted to, you know, get another job in the nine to five, if I wanted to um, get a promotion, I still had to use the same energy to get promoted as I would to build my own business. I had a beautiful experience. So now I'm semi-retired in that arena because there's a time sometimes where you can stay in a thing too long. Massage and healing work in a physical way is, can be very taxing. But I learned about energy healing. And while I was in that arena is when I would say my awakening and complete awareness of who I am as a spiritual being happened. I would go into a room. I learned the technical way of how to not hurt someone doing massage and body work. But while I was in school, I often heard as I was listening and training about anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, and all of that, I heard Spirit speak to me about how beautiful we are wonderfully and fearfully made, how we're made, the, the, the physical essence. But any time I would prepare to do body work on someone, as soon as they would come into the room and approach me, I'm already having a different conversation. They're filling out their intake but I'm asking the question, what is it I need to know about this individual? How should I move and how should I touch and how should I work with them? Next thing you know, I'm setting intention. When I touch them, I'm saying peace. I'm saying clarity. I'm saying healing. And there were many times when the client would literally say, I felt, I felt peace. I felt clarity. Were you praying for me? Were you, were you speaking? Wow. She said they would say I could feel that. And that's when I recognized some other things were going on. I recognized that I had divine assistance. Instead of, um, thinking, instead of looking at a schedule ahead of time when I had to go to the massage center or even my own practice, instead of looking ahead to see how many I had, how many appointments I had, whether I was going to get paid, I would do a meditation. And I would envision before I would go to work that if I had five people on my schedule, if my slots were five people, I would envision that I was already in the healing room and that the individuals were already there. And when I would do that visioning, I would also see and sense something else. I would see and sense divine helpers coming into that space behind each of those clients. Before I got up and moved out of my day, 
I learned how to set the intention and most times my schedule was full. Those are the things that kind of help me grow as a divine flower in this universe. I want to bring it now to where the concept of spiritual life garden there was a poem that I wrote back in 2002 and that poem I'm not going to say the whole thing but I will say the first um, stanza of it and the reason why I wrote the poem because I was in that contemplation asking spirit I was asking spirit what am I here you know, I was in the nine to five, I was raising kids, I was paying bills, I was in that cycle like many people are in, where you're just, it's almost like a hamster. It's almost like you're in a hamster wheel and you're just like, okay, it's got to be more to this. Yes, I love my kids. Yes, you love the work, but sometimes it just you're just in that level. So I'm writing and I'm asking what it is that I'm here to do. And I was, wrote this first poem, it's called A Beautiful Garden. And it came this way, you are a beautiful garden, birthed from a seed planted by God, full of new beginnings, waiting patiently to stir up the sod. You are a beautiful garden, where weeds may sometimes hide. But glory to spirit for his powerful word, weeds have no place to reside. You are a beautiful garden, watered by God's love, pruned by his loving kindness, protected by his son above. You are a beautiful garden, living each day with joy, sprouting your roots so deeply, searching for the river that flows. The river that flows, the river you search for is spirit. Always letting you know that you are a beautiful garden. So let live your life and grow. And so what I recognize is that we are each beautiful gardens. And that within you, you come into this planet encoded with dreams that actually start activating within you, causing you to move into different spaces. We are designed to evolve. If you look at nature around you, do we not have the seasons that change? But we are equipped with mind. We are supposed to be the supreme as, uh, beings here on the planet. Look at nature. Nature has its natural way. If you see ducks or birds, why is it that they're always in formation? There's, some, there's one that's ahead, but everything else follows in balance. This is where we can sometimes get lost because we're not following our innate flow. We're beautiful gardens. There's so much inside that has yet to be tilled. The ground needs to be pulled up. There's opportunities. If you see your life as a garden, every section of your life, see it as a plot within the garden. The vision that Spirit gave to me is waking up in this beautiful house. Waking up in this beautiful house, which is your life, and walking out onto this front porch. When I was a little girl, my, my grandmother had a porch that circled around the whole, uh, there was a porch that circled around the whole house. Some parts of it was screened in. And I walk out onto that porch, and I'm equipped. I look down, and I have this apron on, and I have all kinds of tools in my pockets. I have tools of courage and faith and, you know, tools that help dig up the ground, tools that help pull up the weeds, tools that help fertilize and water the land. And I walk out, and as far as I could see, I see my beautiful garden, and I see the different plots. There's one for finances, there's one for relationships, there's one for health. You get what I'm saying, right? One for... Um, working on that relationship of, uh, of connecting with the higher self, with, with, with the divine. The idea is to go out and work in each of those sections. Sometimes you may have to spend time in one of those sections. Maybe you need to go into the finance section. 
Maybe you need to go in and pull up and get the ground ready. Maybe there's some blocks there, some insecurities, a lack of limitation. You just can't see how anything can grow in that area. But look, you've been blessed. At the gate of that garden is a wheelbarrow full of seeds. Now, you got to get the ground ready. you got to do what's necessary to be able to plant the seeds. And then if you pull up a rock or a block, don't throw it away right away. You might have to chisel on the surface of it because there's some gold in the middle. The stuff that you go through means that there's gold right there in the middle of it. So that's the concept. That's the vision. And that's the idea. Me as Chakra Wanda. The word Chakra, it's a Sanskrit word. It's, uh, some of you may have uh, heard the term, maybe you haven't. But uh, a Chakra is uh, our, our energy centers. Uh, energy centers. Um, you've heard the word crown. So at the top of the head, you have your crown center. You have your third eye coming down to the throat. You have the heart center. You have the solar plexus, you have the sacral, and then you have the root. The seven chakras, seven layers of who you are. I hope to teach you more about that. You also have your auric fields. It's very important to understand your etheric field. The etheric field, which is closest to the body. There's a spiritual level, there's a... So yes, guys, I'm still learning my technology. We're going to go and continue with part two. Thank Mental you. Mental level. Here's the deal. Understanding your energy field and your chakra centers, they impact your actual organs in the body, your emotions, and the, the, any, any kind of dis-ease or disorder that manifests in your physical body actually shows up in your energy fields before it manifests. Also, look at the outpicturing of what's going on in your life. The people that are attached to you. It's a manifestation of what you've actually brought in or maybe has been attached to you. There's so much that I'm looking forward to sharing with you about ourselves as spiritual life gardens. There's so much that I want to just make you aware of. <laughs> so let's go into the final piece. So beloved, let's just take a deep breath here. What I hope to accomplish, uh, having the opportunity for my voice to go out to the universe <laughs> here through the various platforms, is for you to take it in, reflect, do your work. Prayerfully, the information that I share can be the beginning of a seed planted within you. I want to share a writing, and I will be sharing my writings over time. I posted this on my Instagram at Spiritual Life Garden. So this is for you. There's fruit in your life garden that's overdue to be picked from the vine of procrastination. This fruit bears the seeds that will provide nourishment, which is provision in many forms, i.e. money, etc., for your next project or calling or passion. You've been hovering over that new section of your life garden way too long, looking for the seeds to support you. It's important to be in balance with your gardening. There's a sequence and time for every phase. Tilling, sowing, watering and fertilizing, patience, pruning, weeding, Picking the fruit, which is the harvest time. In all sections of your life, garden, you must follow the sequence. 
You cannot expect fruit if you haven't done all of the previous steps. There must be a balanced amount of time given to tend to each phase. You must be fueled from a place of feeling that all your basic needs are already met. So again, the fruit that already exists in your garden needs to be pulled, needs to be picked. This may be fuel to support your basic needs and more. What do you already have? What are you literally sitting on that people need and are more than ready to exchange their resources, their money, their time, their love? for what you create out of your garden from the fruit that's already there. Are you feeling pushed by this question, by these questions right now? Well, good. Now go work your life garden. What you think you don't have can be manifested by what you do have. Put the fruit in baskets and set them out so they can be seen, they can be heard, they can be smelled and even felt. Stop playing small. Okay? <laughs> You've been listening to Spiritual Life Garden, and I'm your host, Chakra Wanda, on WDRB Media, the voice of the community, for double the information and inspiration. It's been a blessing.